I'm Anil Kumar. Welcome to my series on patterns. We are going to relate patterns with algebra in this particular video. This video is for middle school students who haven't learned much about sequences and series. And whatever they know, based on that, this question should be solved. The question here is, a theater has 15 seats in the first row, 18 seats in the second row, 21 seats in the third row, and so on. Describe the pattern in words. Part B. Write an algebraic expression for the value of nth row. C. How many seats are there in the tenth row? D. How many seats are in the first ten rows? So you can pause the video, answer this question, and then look into my suggestions. Now, whenever you get a question like this, it's a good idea to make a table of values. Right? So we also call it a t-chart for some time, right? So we're looking for number of seats in each row, right? Let's say we have the first column, which will describe the row number, right? Let's say this is a row number. And then we have number of seats. In the first row, we are given 15 seats, right? 18 seats in the second row. So in the 18 seats in the second row, 21 in the third row, and so on. So when it says, and so on, we have to look for a pattern. So when you go from 15 to 18, and then from 18 to 21, what do you notice? Well, we notice that 3 has been added, right? So each time there are 3 extra seats added as the row number increases. Based on this pattern, we can easily say that on the 4th row and 5th and so on, the number of seats should be how much? We have to add by 3 each time. So if I add 3 to 21, what do I get? Adding 3 to 21 is 24, right? So, so if I add 3, what I get here is 24. And then 24 and then 27 and so on, correct? So that is the pattern in which the number of seats and the row numbers are related, correct? So that is the way to describe. So what we can right here is that there are 15 seats in the row 1 and the, it is a growing pattern. We can say it's a growing pattern and in short we can say growing by 3 seats each time. All right. So that is the pattern and of course you start at 15. So you start at 15. Okay. So your pattern will be start at 15 and then increase the number of seats by 3 each time. Part B is write an algebraic expression for the value of nth row. So in general what we do is that we give alphabetical numbers, lowercase normally, for variables, let's say n. So that becomes now the nth row, first row, second row, third row, and so on. And in each row, now we have seat numbers. Now if I have row number n, we have to write down how many seats will there be? How do I get this number? That is the question. Perfect. Now, you have seen that we are adding by 3 each time. So what we could do is we can actually get back to the zeroth row, right? Let's think about something here. What should that number be? So I'm trying to give you another way of looking into it. I'll also give you the answer which is there in your book. But this is how you could also think, right? So that is going back. Well, every time we have to increase by 3, so this number should actually be 12, right? So that when I add 3, I get 15. So 12 plus 3 is 15. That number should be 12 minus 3, right? So that number will be 
15 minus 3 which is 12. Perfect. So what do we get here is the number for 0th row. Now in all our patterns we normally start with 1 and therefore in the books we always have n minus 1 as a term. Now n minus 1 becomes too difficult for our junior and middle school students. But this is simpler. We can go back by 3 and for 0 row now we have 12. Now look at it. Every time we go forward we add 3. Start from 0, right? Every time, first row, 3 more. Do you see that? Starting with 12. Correct? So it is 3 more, 3 more, 3 more. So when you go to here to 5, how do you get 27? Well, we started with 12. And then what did we do? We added 3 rows. We added 5 rows with 3 seats each. So 3 times 5. Does it make sense? 3 for every row. Right? So 12 plus 15 is 27. We get our result. So what we can write our pattern as? So the algebraic expression which you could actually write here is in terms of n is 12 plus 3 times n. Now 3 is a critical number. You are increasing by 3 each time. Perfect. Now, if you do a bit of calculation, understanding, then you have to go back to a row which is 0. So, so even the first row, think about as being added 3 from something before. Correct? Normally, in the schools we write not like this, but we write like this. We start with 15. We say 15 plus n minus 1 times 3. And now see how it works out. So it works out like this, 15 plus n times 3 is 3n minus 3. And then we say 15 minus 3 plus 3n and 15 minus 3 is 12, we get 12 plus 3n. So do you see that? You still went back by 3 to get the number 12 and then you got the same answer. Now that approach is pretty good. I'm not, I'm not against it, but this is far better. So think about going to the 0th row and then even the first row. How did we come here? Follow the pattern. We came here by adding 3 since going there is also adding 3. So where were we? We were at 12 rows before that. You get my point. So row number 1 is 3 more than 12. Then we have 6 more, 9 more multiple of this number itself. So it becomes easier than to think in terms of n minus 1. That's what I want to emphasize. But when, still, if you feel that is good for you, continue. But this is a far better approach which can be applied generally. Okay. So we get our answer 12 plus 3n. Either way you do, right? Both ways, you get the same answer. Perfect. You start from here, you will end up here only. That's it. Or you can straight away go one step back, you know, 12. And now, how many threes should be added? Same times the number of row, right? Three times the number of row. Got it. Part C. How many seats are there in the tenth row? So we'll just put 10 here. So like 12 plus 3 times 10. So that is 12 plus 30, which gives us 42. So they are going to be in tenth row 42 seats. Clear? Now the last question is also a very difficult question. How many seats are there in the first 10 rows? Wow! How do you do this? Well, think about it. In the first row, we got 15, right? And then we got 18, and then we got 21, and then we got so on. And then 10th row is 42, right? Before that will be 3 less, that means 39, right? Before that, three less and so on. So these are our number of seats per row number, right? We need to add all these numbers. One way of course is you can just add them. That you could do. What else we could do? Now the alternate method is a very good method. Alternate method is 
add first and last what do you get 2 plus 5 is 7 4 plus 1 is 5 we get 57 very good now what happens if I add second and second last let's try to add this one also 9 plus 8 is 17 1 4 plus 1 again 5 57 so what will happen is all these additions which you make you will get what 57 right so this will be like 36 and when you add that even then you get 57 so how many 57s will you get well there are 10 numbers and you are pairing them up so so the question is how many pairs so we get five pairs adding to 57 oh then I can easily find the total right so what should be the total well now the total should be 57 I mean 5 times let me write 5 times 57 correct so 5 times 7 is 35 3 5 times 5 is 25 and 3 285 so we should have 285 seats does it make sense so try to understand there are 10 rows and if I add first and last I get 57 second and second last 57 third and third last 57 fourth and fourth last 57 and the middle two right will again give us 57 since there are 10 rows there'll be five pairs all adding to 57 so 5 times 57 285 will be the total number of seats does it make sense so that is how we are going to actually solve this particular question now if you follow this pattern then it will be much simpler for you to answer similar questions i hope that helps feel free to write your comment share your views and if you like and subscribe to my videos that'd be great share my videos with your friends thank you and all the best